I'm slowly but surely developing a cozy, creature collecting and management game. And this is Devlog 5. Raging. After having previously modeled my character and some accessories, the next natural step was to make it move. Basically, simulating movement by vertex displacement. The control of how, when and which vertices to displace can be simplified by creating vertex groups and making their transform depend on an external object, usually referred to as a bone. To add even more fine-tuning, each vertex also has a weight value in relation to the bone, specifying how closely the vertex will follow the bone. Adding more bones and forming a hierarchy is referred to as rigging and results in an armature. The process of creating the vertex groups and attaching these to bones is referred to as skinning. My lack of expertise in these fields prompted me to optimize and simplify this process even more. First, by hiding and ignoring accessories that need to deform, they will be the focus for another time. Secondly, by utilizing the Blender add-on Rigify. Rigify has pre-built meta rigs from which the real rig is generated. One such meta rig is the human rig, which given the pose and disproportional style of my character needed some bone adjustments. First of all, I chose to postpone the face rigging and those bones were therefore simply omitted. The bone placement approach, after some documentation reading and experimenting, began with identifying the rigid zones pelvis, chest and for now, head. Then placing the spine root bone in the pelvis area, the spine 3 bone in the chest area and the spine 6 bone in the head area. Then adjusting the intermediate bones in an evenly spaced fashion. Additional bones in the rigid zones, like the pelvis bones, share their start position with the spine root bone and extrude outwards to the top of the pelvis and forward. And the breast bones, part of the chest rigid zone in this case, should be positioned in the middle of the rigid zone on the Z and Y axis, with an offset outwards on the X axis. The shoulder bones were placed at the top of the chest, displaced a bit from the center, and with the end at the top and start of the shoulder. The two arm bones and the one hand bone were placed on a straight line in the center of the arm and hand, connected at the elbow and wrist, and finalized by a slight rotation at the elbow. All the finger bones, three each, were placed relative to mesh edge loops separating the distinct finger joints, with the end at the tip of each respective finger and then rotated slightly at every joint. The last palm bones were then placed one after the other from the start of the hand and spread out towards each separate finger, excluding the thumb. Similar to the arm bones, the leg bones were placed in a straight line from the pelvis to the ankle, with the connection at the knee joint and with a slight bend. Lastly, the foot bone goes from the ankle down to the last third of the foot and from there the toe bone extrudes towards the end of the middle toe. The foot was then concluded with the heel bone right at the end. With all the bones correctly placed, generating the real rig was just a button click away. The result is a beautiful, intricate and functional rig, including mechanical helper bones, widget bones, forward and inverse kinematic bone chains, deformation bones, the original meta rig, and handles to easily control it all. The skinning of the model to the rig was done by parenting the model to the rig with automatic weights. This means that a so-called bone heat algorithm was used to calculate how and which of the model vertices that should be affected by which bones of the rig based on distances. It's worth noting that I made slight adjustments in the meta rig bone placements compared to the official rigified documentation. 
These were done iteratively with the main goal of improving the automatic weight generation. Hence, the model deforms quite well without the need for any additional weight painting for now. And some instances where it does not might actually be obscured or even positively enhanced by the cell shading and outlines in-game. Unfortunately, the rig was not game ready just yet. Rigify rigs come with a lot of bells and whistles which enable the creation of beautiful things, but which are superfluous for most games, at least for mine. That being said, the meta rig was used to generate this rig, which will work as a control rig for a third game ready rig. The game ready rig was derived from the control rig by first duplicating it and removing all non deformation bones and widgets, as well as disabling bendy bones. The bone hierarchy is also complex and not optimal for a game rig, and therefore it needed to be adjusted. Finally, the deform bones of the game rig were constrained to copy the transform of the corresponding deform bones of the control rig. All of this was quite a tedious task, but it could be somewhat automated by developing a Blender add-on thanks to the extendability of Blender. The result is a game-ready rig that can be easily animated in Blender using the control rig and then exported to Unity. Correctly imported, the result was a base object with an animator component. An armature child object containing each bone of the armature as empty game objects. And another child object with a skinned mesh renderer component, which references to the actual mesh and previously mentioned armature object. The animator on the base object also holds a reference to a humanoid avatar, which was properly generated by Unity during import. The avatar system is a part of Unity's animation system for humanoid characters, allowing and improving extra features like retargeting, inverse kinematics and muscle groups. Unity's animation and avatar system, with the support of Rigify in Blender, will together form the workflow needed to bring some life into my game. With poses, ragdolling, and lastly, animations, but that's yet to come.